Hey guys, and welcome back to Titan Tries. This time, up on the examination block, we have Ace Combat 2. So before we do anything, we're going to change our key configuration to Expert. Um, not really sure what the response thing is. How, I guess that's how quick your uh, jet changes... Um, I don't know, respond to your controls, I suppose. I'm not really sure. We're going to leave it on normal anyway. So, Ace Combat 2. Oh, yeah, because this one uh, actually has proper analog support, which is really bloody nice, I can tell you, for having, a, you know, an actual uh, flight sim experience. Now, much like the original game, uh, it's not really a flight sim. It's very much an arcade shooter set in the skies one thing you will notice is the name has now changed to ace combat in line with uh, the japanese name and the budget went through the roof and you can really tell now that's something that continued on with ace combat 3 as well the budget just kept growing and growing and growing and man when you look at air combat 1 and um ace combat 3 electrosphere Visually, and from a gameplay standpoint, the difference between the two is staggering. Uh, anyway, let's skip all of that. So we've got a bit of a blurb here. Ace Combat 2 is a, f is a combat flight simulator game that was released for the PlayStation 1 in 1997, which is interesting, only two years after. It's the second title of the Ace Combat series, which is known for its arcade-like gameplay and cinematic presentation. Yeah, I mean, I guess you probably could stretch Ace Combat 2 to a more cinematic-like game, I suppose. The game follows the story of Scarface 1, a mercenary pilot who is hired by the Unified Command to fight against a rebel military force that has taken over the continent of UC. UC? Okay. The game features 21 missions, so it's actually longer than the first one. Uh, with various objectives, such as destroying enemy bases, escorting allies, engaging in dogfights. The game also allows the player to choose from 24 different aircraft, which is good. So that is an increase of 8 from the first game, because the first game only had 16. Each with its own performance and weapons. Interesting. So I wonder if this is the first game that changed the weapon loadout. I did play a lot of this game. However, um, I haven't actually completed this game since I had it back on the PlayStation 1. Unlike when we took a look at Ace Combat or Air Combat 1, I'd already run through the game the day before I filmed that video. Um, okay, so we can still hire wingmen in this one, which makes sense. I wonder if they're any better this time around, though. Uh, the game has branching mission paths that lead to different endings depending on the player's choice. Interesting. So Colony Wars was very famous for doing that. So it's nice to see that come in. And um, so this game actually outsold the original, which was good. And uh, yeah, so it doesn't really tell us much more. But yeah, so Ace Combat 2, the actual sequel... Let's start a new game, shall we? We'll play on normal. 
coup d'etat broke out in the military corps' general area code NAP-2700. They saw an opportunity during a time when their leaders were away from the country on a diplomatic mission. After the forces occupied the center of administration, they seized control of important facilities in each district. They are expanding their influence while strengthening their fighting power. Their military capabilities include air and sea forces. It has also been confirmed that they are in possession of extra-powerful cruise missiles. To respond to the rebel forces, the military corps headquarters made a decision to use the special tactical fighter squadron Scarface, which consists of you, my fellow pilots. We want you to go on this mission and suppress the coup d'etat immediately. You will receive all-out support from our military corps, full information regarding the rebels, full cooperation through our intelligence division, and military supplies. The situation is tense, and there is no time to waste. Okay, <laughs> let's just skip the rest of the... Uh... Sure. So you can see the interface has had a huge overhaul. They've spent a lot more money on it. We've still got our data, campaign data, personal data systems we can save much nicer interface actually i guess we've got nothing to buy this time all right interception of invasion units now this one actually mentions that uh, there's going to be a lot more sea combat i guess now air combat one actually had sea combat missions in it but only a couple and you only were fighting i believe there's one point where you take out a carrier and its escort uh, and then there's another one where you have to destroy an Aegis um, ship that's docked, but that's it. Interception of invasion unit. It's a rush sortie mission. We have received information that an enemy invasion unit is approaching our front base. It is a small unit with bombers as its main force. Take off immediately and shoot them down. Yes, boss. Target, yeah, definitely seems to be some sort of emulation problems with this one, which is interesting. So we've only got two... No, we've got an A4 and an F4. So that's got more stability, which I believe is like turning rate and stuff like that. We'll go with the F4 Phantom. So, because of the weird glitching that we're getting, um, when it comes time to actually record this game, I'm probably just going to play it from my console. Now, one thing that's really cool is we actually have a proper, proper third-person camera this time. You can actually play the game comfortably, which is nice. Graphics have had a absolutely ginormous overhaul, as we can see. Especially as I'm playing this literally straight after. And analog control, guys. Analog. So we've still got the fuel gauge, which is a glorified timer, nothing else. Come on, baby. Let's pop that target. Oh, we've been tracked. Ooh. Not great. I think later on in the series you get flares and other countermeasures which you can pop, which is nice. Way more detailed map going on here with a draw distance that's been improved as well. Look at how much better that map is. Also, they've taken the um, ammunition for the gun away. You now just have unlimited ammo, which is cool. I'm a fan of that. Now obviously we can just like wipe everything out and earn more money. But as we're just having a look at the game, this doesn't appear to be a huge amount of point in doing so. Although, let's have a little cheeky engagement with this uh, A4. Little trainer plane from what I can understand. <laughs> he came apart. Careful now, that water ain't no joke, yo. Again, the music is absolutely fantastic. Come on, go for F4 and F4. Now, the F4 was an amazing, legendary uh, Vietnam-era aircraft. 
but she is well and truly outgunned and out basically everything these days. With the likes of, you know, fourth and fifth generation aircraft. And uh, sixth generation aircraft, like the Tempest on the horizon. Come yeah, on, got you padlock, boy. Get out of here. Looks like two missiles seem to be doing the job as well on these smaller, smaller jets, smaller fighters. Which, in the first game, it was between two and four, depending on the um, offensive capabilities of your particular jet. But. I never found a huge amount of difference between them, to be honest. Oh, he's done. He's done. Right. So, a little bit lost on the old map here. Burning through our fuel. So that looks like our friend. That blue dot. Is that our carrier? Yeah. Because this arrow on the map seems to be taking us to our objective. Which is actually really nice to see. Especially considering how much bigger the map is. At least. Yep. Enemies. I was going to say, I hope that's the situation. Otherwise, it's a little bit awkward. Uh, using afterburners doesn't appear to drain our fuel any faster, so I'm guessing that is just an arbitrary time limit. Alright, here we go. Now, I don't know if there's any failure states for these missions, because there wasn't in the original. Not that I'm aware of, anyway. Ooh, bagged his ass. B-52s. Not sure if B-52s have rear gunners in this one, like they did in the first one. Not sure. Looks like the missile lock-on range is a little bit shorter. Yes, they do. They do have tail gunners. And we have a percentage on our damage, which is nice. In the original game, the um, icon of your aircraft just changed colour. It's also a nice visual representation of when your missiles have reloaded, which is also nice. So also new to this is we actually have replays if we want to watch them. You can watch the entire replays of the uh, mission, which is cool. And you get a um, map based replay here, which did become standard for Ace Combat. Whether that was um, going forward from this one, I'm not sure, but I know all the later ones have that. Still get a nice little breakdown of how much cash we uh, earn. Still got to pay for repairs. But we do rank up. I believe they added optional aces to this one as well. New aircraft available, KFC-7. All right. Let's do one more mission. we we'll do for easy money and then we'll call it. Got to be a little bit quicker on this one because uh, I've got a very busy day ahead. Um, let's go for the F4 again. Just because at the moment it's the biggest hammer in our toolbox. I do like this... Um, third person camera now what's cool is uh, later on in the series we started getting the fully rendered cockpit views which I'm a humongous fan of come on baby come on let's get this MIG padlocked he's done Ooh, missile right in the ass. it's not good is it luckily these planes are significantly more durable than they are in real life. Oof, smoked them. Ooh, hello, big daddy. OK, 
can, man. Ah, start taking out some of these C-17 transporters, eh? Pop these whilst they're full of troops and equipment. Looks like they're definitely way more durable. So it looks like about 900 meters is where your missiles start getting a little bit more... A little bit more useful. Let's see if we can go in for a gun kill. Although I'm not sure what the gun range is in this one. I'm guessing it's under 500 again. Yep, looks like it. Come on. Don't touch noses. We're not Eskimos. Oh dear. <laughs> that ground's getting mighty close, yo. Now this was before we had the uh, action cam and where you could hold down the Y or triangle button to track your target in real time. I can't remember what they call that now, the lock-on camera or whatever it was. And in later games as well, when you fire missiles, you can keep the missile button held down and you get a cool little camera of the missile going into the plane. Which again was really cool. This certainly is a series that just continuously kept evolving which was nice although we do get to the third game which was a little bit a uh, little bit different in that regard but we'll cover that in more detail when we get to the third game get out of here you bum Ooh, nearly threaded the needle then don't want to be threading no needles today. Ooh, hello. Evening. Come to daddy, sweet cheeks. You are padlocked. Okay. Yeah, because there's quite a lot of uh, these sort of arcadey flight sim games on the PlayStation. And, uh, man, I was so down for it. A game that I would like to do a let's try of, actually, is Team Apache. But getting that to run on a modern PC uh, probably ain't going to be happening anytime soon. I remember back in the day I had a flight stick for that game and everything. I was never any good at it, but, uh, you know, I tried. <laughs> Love that game. I wonder if someone's done an LP of it, actually. Must have. Get out of here. The game feels a lot faster and more fluid as well than um, the first game. Which is fun. And we're now a senior airman. Oh, we got an A6 of it. Oof, an A6? Really? I guess that's a grabs attack. Ah, Superfly. This is what I was saying. So one of the guys we shot down was actually named Superfly, which I believe is an ace, which is a, yeah, which is a new um, thing that they added. Uh, there's loads of achievements and things like that in the later games for shooting down ace pilots, and they got really really difficult uh, and I must confess I was never good at it so if ever comes a time where we get to the later on games which I'm sure one day um, <laughs> I definitely can't promise to do a complete 100% playthrough because my god <laughs> yeah but we'll certainly play them for the story and stuff like that I'm sure um, anyway guys I think I'm going to leave this one here I've really enjoyed doing this. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I guess we might as well on the next playthrough, uh, or the next uh, Titan Tries, I should say, we're probably going to cover Ace Combat 3, and then we'll go on to something else. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching, and as always, till next time.